Take it from me that we will be traveling into the world of high-speed sport that only a few have ever truly experienced. Nothing gets the heart pumping and the blood rushing more than sports. Sudden death, home run, tiebreaker, slam dunk, that's the kind of in-your-face action that brings fans screaming to their feet with the kind of red-hot passion you pray your customers will feel about your brand as well. Now, here's a sport that's got it all. G-Force, danger, man against nature. Get ready for the fast and furious, heart slamming sport of offshore powerboat racing. See, the challenge for offshore powerboat racing is that it's, well, offshore. So when the fans wanted this, What they were ultimately getting was this. Nowhere near as exciting as you can see. Now this is the story of how one of the world's leading race teams partnered with IBM to transport and transform their sport from this. And the buoy. Beautiful, nice one. Good. To now this in record time. So the question is, how'd they do it? Well, that's what the founder of Silverhook is here to tell us. So without further ado, Please give a warm welcome and a round of applause, the throttleman of the number 90, 77, the number 77, Lucas Oil Silverhook, Nigel Hook. There we go. Thank you. The first thought on my mind is I want to say, and now for something completely different. Hi, my name is Nigel Hook. I'm the throttle man of that 77 Lucas Oil Powerboat. And not many people get to race those boats, but in this connected world, all our lives are full of sharp turns and high-speed turbulence, right? One of my challenges was I raced on the world's largest racetrack, that ocean. And so to make my team be more effective, I reached out to a friend of mine, Ian Taylor, whose company, Virtually, transformed the world of sailboat racing in America's Cup, both for fans, officials, commentators, and race teams like us. Ian, <laughs> thanks Nigel. for your help. Nigel, thank you very much, Nigel. And uh, as we say in New Zealand, kia ora and welcome. It is an absolute privilege to be here as part of Interconnect. Now, obviously, the name of any game is getting closer to the fans. Being a fan these days, especially with mobile applications, is a social thing. It's about sharing, arguing, cheering. It's about stats and standings and winners and wannabes. But to get them to share, we have to get them involved. And that means getting them engaged visually. And, you know, we have to engage the TV commentators as well, because in this sport, they're usually miles away, locked away in a room. <laughs> Take a look around here, boxing arena. It's easy to get a camera here into the boxing arena, stick, stick it there in the corner, watch the fight. It's really fantastic. Take that out to, onto a choppy ocean, trying to chase um, Nigel's boat at around 170 miles an hour. It's a little more challenging. Race officials, they can't exactly sit around on te um, tennis things, watching like a tennis court as they do, but they still need to know exactly what's happening. They need to know who's ahead, they need to know who's missed a turn, who's committed an infraction, even, and this may be hard to believe, <laughs> who actually won the bloody race. And you're absolutely right, Ian, that is sometimes a challenge. Now, we're moving at 140 miles or more, we're making split-second decisions. It's really critical to know what's going on in the boat at the time when we can actually do something about it. And having that data, having that information there, is a difference sometimes between winning and losing. My job as a throttle man of this boat, I control the speed of the boat, the roll of the boat, and the pitch. At the same time, I'm constantly scanning the sea conditions to see how the water is. I'm looking at the competition to see where they are in the corners, etc. But I'm also going to scan the gauges because at the same time I've got to make sure all the systems in a boat are performing optimally. So what if I could have my team worry about all those gauges and I can focus my attention 
on flying the boat as fast as possible and bring in a victory home for Lucas Oil 717. In order to get this better visibility into what's going on in the boat, I use my company Data Skill to partner with IBM's JSTART team. And these are like the ninjas <laughs> of IBM's emerging technology, right? So very quickly, we built a Bluemix application that, that allowed my data to be fired up into the cloud, run through high-powered data analytics, and then just send back to me what's relevant so I don't have to see all of this massive data. And this, so what we did effectively is turn this race boat into a floating data center, very high-speed one. And so my boat and the pilots in the boat were, became their very own Internet of Things. And to be really clear here, Nigel boat, Nigel's boat kicks out a lot of data. <laughs> now, when we started the America's Cup graphics back in 1992, we had two bits of data, an X and a Y coordinate from the back of the boat. With a Nigel's boat, where it has 80 data sources on the engines alone, it's generating 2,000 bits of data a second. There's also the data coming from Nigel. He's got this little bra on here. No, I said well, not to mention the bra. It's it, a bro. It's a bro. Sorry. He's got this little bro on. So there's all this data coming from there as well. So the challenge isn't just gathering the data. It's using analytics, the analytics to visualize this tidal wave of data in ways that make it meaningful so people can actually make sense of it and use it. That was the major breakthrough for us, wasn't it? It is. And if my team can help me focus on racing the boat, and even better now, be able to bring the fans into the cockpit during the race and go for a virtual ride. Yeah. Let's which, see a race. Yeah, yeah, which is, let's see a race. This is the perfect time to bring in my colleague over here, John Rendell from Virtual Eye. Fire up, John. Let's go racing. So here we are. If we're going to have the virtual race in the virtual world, we have to build that virtual world. Here's the virtual world. This is Florida, uh, Key, uh, Key West, West of Florida. And actually, as we fly over, we're looking at this. You and Janet got a married somewhere there, didn't you? Special point over there on Sunset We're just Key. going past yep. it. Flew so anyway, we're going wind. out there. Now we're flying out to the course. This is the data. We'll talk about the data left. So the boats are racing out here. And because we're really good guys and we know who helped fund this, we can put your names on the water. So fire them up, John. Give us the branding there. Oh, there we go. Those are the people who worked with us. Um, so we've got the engine. You can see the starting things. There's a little red line down there. That's probably the boat. Could you take us down? Let's just check, see what, he's do what you're doing down here, Nigel. Here we go. So we're heading on down. So remember, this would be, um, John would be set up on the shore in a TV compound miles away from this racing. The data is going from that boat up to the cloud, being sorted out, fired back to John, and John can move around and do anything I ask him to do at the moment. But the most interesting thing on the mobile platforms all over the world, people can be doing what John's doing. So currently we're looking at your boat, but they could be looking at another boat. They could be looking at heart rates. It's just incredible. But here is the really sexy bit. Cockpit, please, John. Fire up. Here's your cockpit. This is fantastic. So now we're looking at the cockpit inside, and this data is being analyzed. As we said before, there are thousands of bits of data going up to the cloud, being analyzed by this guy called Watson. I love this. During the week, Watson's working with concrete and medicine and all that. In the weekend, he goes boating with Nigel. So see, here we've got, see the lights? He's just, no, he, oh, Watson's just seen something go wrong there. So we're kind of lighting this sort of stuff up. So this is these thousands and thousands of bits of data going up to Watson. He's sorting them out on his desk, firing them back down to us, back into the cockpit. But more importantly, it's going back to the support crew. So Nigel's got two guys, two people in the boat. He's also got eight people on the shore, including his medical team, and he's got this really clever bugger up there called Watson watching over him as well. So that's really important, isn't it, Nigel? It is, yes. And actually, it came to uh, help in the last race of the World Championships in Key West. The final three laps of the final yeah. race, um, I got an alert that was passed down to me from the crew chief to say that the battery systems on the starboard side were declining. And so if left unattended, the boat would come to a standstill on that one side. So with that information, I was able to switch from the parallel battery system to serial. So one engine was powering both battery systems, and we continued on and came third in the race, which actually for us, that was a good score. I mean, that, just, just to summarize, that's an amazing thing, that some guy sitting on the shore, this stuff's going up to the cloud, coming down to the cloud, going through our system out to him. He rings you up on the phone and says, you've got a problem. Well, it's you, in, the, in the hot, yeah. you know, in the uh, I mean, that's camera. incredible. <laughs> you, there's no way you could have known that, couldn't you? You would have right. ended up blowing that engine and not making it to the finish line. W wouldn't have finished for that. It's absolutely fantastic. And so thank you very, very much, John. How about now, John, the conductor over there? He's really the brains. I've got no idea how this stuff works. <laughs> thank you, John. You can take us out of there.
Now, you also need to know, and this is the internet of things, I think this is fantastic. Everything you just thought was built in three weeks. Not only was it built in three weeks, it was built with a company in New Zealand, which was ours, your company in San Diego, there's the um, Bluemix guys in, in Austin and Raleigh, some guys in the UK, all in, three, all in three weeks, we didn't even get to meet each other. That's the internet of things. And not only did we do that, but we built an app that not, run, doesn't run on a mainframe, it's running on everything from a computer down to your mobile device. Here's how it works, Nigel. So what we're racing, the boat's come along, it's got all this telemetry data, not just for the engines, it's got the biometrics from us as well, that go, actually goes up into Bluemix via the IBM Internet of Things service. So once it's up in there, you'll see it's going across. This is where Watson sits. He's sitting at his desk going through all this stuff, working it out really, really fast. There's all these sort of applications there. Then he sends single alerts from there out to the really key people. you notice it's going back to the boat as well. So it's come off the boat, up to that clever guy up there. He does all that stuff over there, fires it back down to the boats. But more importantly, it's going out. Commentators, fans, officials, and the race team. Now, I haven't told him. I'm actually not a technical guy. You can tell by the way I explained that. I actually used to be a singer in a rock and roll band. <laughs> so, so I can look at this, and I'll tell you what, if this makes sense to me, then it's really easy. I actually think it's just bloody amazing. It is, and actually for me, knowing something in real time like this is real key because it gives me a chance to do something about it so I can react and finish the race. Because of the internet of things, anything can be a thing. In, in our race boat, we've got hundreds of those things. And we got GPS signals, we got heat sensors, we got pressure sensors, we've got the biometrics coming out of us. We got all of this information, data points are data points, right? So it's all the same. What we've already seen is that our team has now been working with these biometric sensors to adding health into the equation. I've just, I've just thought of something, actually. I just, I just interrupt because I was going so fast I forgot something. Is it possible <laughs> to go back to John? Because he's looking at me going, See, he's been blithering away up there and he forgot the most important thing. So if it's possible to get back to John, let's see, because I missed out the really important bit, which was the biometrics. <laughs> well, I'm busy showing you the boat, so if we can get back there, while we're waiting to see if we can get back to it, the biometrics are going from Nigel up to things. So we're viewing the heart rate, we're viewing the breathing, we're viewing the temperatures, and all the G-forces, Nigel, and that's really important too, isn't it? It is, yes, so you can make sure the, the pilots in the boat that we're re really been as effective as possible. I'm going to be shot for this, aren't I? We had this, it was a really fantastic sequence, because you can see, <laughs> you know, as the boat, let me describe it. The boat sailing through the water there, this graphic comes up, and you can see the heart rate going boom, 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 and Nigel's heart rate's running at about 150 beats per minute while he's, what's it normally? About 50. It's about 50. What was it when you walked out in front of all these people? Definitely on the rev limiters. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> so we've got that. Then we've got the, the temperatures coming from the body in Celsius, working out all of that sort of stuff, and the G-forces on the boat. And what we had seen in the G-forces on the boat was it sometimes peaking at 7 Gs, which is like Formula 1, isn't it? What is? Formula 1 is, is sustaining those in the corner. Yeah. So it's more of a, a gradual uh, G-force. We're taking them over time on impact like that. So that's why it's very hard to uh, actually read the gauges and stuff while we're racing. And stress on the boat is one thing, right? But when you can actually monitor stress on a human being, that's a whole different story. So it, when, it, when a race starts, we, we now found out, I didn't know this before, but uh, a race starts, our heartbeats race up to like 160 beats a minute or more in a matter of seconds. And we're racing in the tropical sun, closed cockpit, we've got full race suit on, we've got helmets, we've got life jackets, and so it's a very, very violent, uh, kind of very extreme uh, uh, environment, and we don't have air conditioning. So being able to monitor the health of the, of the races in the cockpit is, is uh, very vital for, for our performance. Yeah. At high speeds and dangerous situations, it's absolutely critical that we have clear thinking at all times. Yeah, and, and really that's the kind of thing, that's the kind of value that Watson brings. I'm just going to take a little sidestep here to <laughs> say, tell something, and this is really going to muck them up backstage too. I'm just going to go somewhere else with a little announcement here about the little town I come from called Dunedin. So it's at the bottom of the world. The next stop is Antarctica. Today, Dunedin was the first town in the southern hemisphere to switch over to gigabit data. So that's Gigatown Dunedin is now 
1,000 megabits per second in the town, first town in the southern hemisphere, and I mention it because it truly is one stop from Antarctica, so if that's happening down there, the Internet of Things, which has been the subject of interconnectivity, the subject of this entire IBM conference, says if that little town has just gone to 1,000 megabits a second, then the world is headed in that direction and you're headed in the same direction. And as we said before, Nigel, in our high-speed world, your high-speed world on the water, our high-speed world in dealing with data, it's good to know that we've got a partner like IBM who's moving as fast as we are. Thank you very much. Thank you.